The 2012-2013 athletic season has come to an end here at Texas A&M, but nothing ever really stops for our teams. That is certainly true of Aggie men's hoops. Today, 12th Man TV is in the locker room of the Cox McFerrin Center for Aggie basketball, and this is a summer visit with our head coach, Billy Kennedy. And coach, it is summertime, but that doesn't mean any kind of break for you. Thanks for taking the time to join us. I'm glad to be here. Let's discuss your team. Uh, to get this started, you're going to welcome some newcomers, uh, a class that I know that you guys are excited about. If we kind of go down the list on these guys, I want to start by asking about Devontae Fitzgerald. Uh, this is a 6'7 guy who's certainly athletic, and that really fits the bill in the Southeastern Conference, doesn't it? Yeah, I think uh, with this class, we've got a lot more length, meaning a lot more size at, at every position, and that's one of the things we wanted to add. And Devontae... Uh, fits that role. Uh, he's about six, seven and a half, maybe six, eight. He's uh, got a great wingspan. The one thing he's, he can do is score the basketball, and we've really been impressed with him. He's been here a couple of weeks now. Uh, a good student, great kid, and his work ethic's been really good, but one thing he can do that we haven't had uh, at the three since Chris left is, is a scoring, scoring wing. Uh, obviously, Elson was pretty good, but uh, I think Devontae's going to be a good player. Mm -hmm. If we move on, more length, more height, Dylan Johns, a 6'10 post player. Yeah, he, he's close to seven feet. I mean, he's a long, uh, tall, athletic post guy. You know, he can play the five. He's skilled enough the way he can make a shot. He's got to get stronger, but he's a kid we got this summer. Originally signed with LSU last year. and. Uh, can block shots, something we haven't had in the last couple of years. Uh, but he's an athletic guy. As, as he gains weight and gains strength, uh, we think he can, he can be a big difference maker for us. And Jamal Jones is a Texan uh, from Baytown, and he'll come here from Lee College. Well, he's actually a hog. He's actually from Arkansas. So um, anyway, but, but he's been a Texan the last year, and we need to keep him in Texas, and we're excited about Jamal. Scoring wing can play a lot of positions, uh, the two, the three, the four. Uh, some think he can play some one. He's that skilled. He's about 6'8", uh, one of the leading scorers in junior college basketball this year. Uh, very good scoring wing that we think can be an impact guy. Tavario Miller, uh, your thoughts on this young man? Tavario from Wheatley High School, uh, Houston, very athletic, uh, chases balls down, can, can rebound the ball. Uh, can run the floor probably better than anybody we've had since I, I've been here. Uh, just can really run and, and, and score around the basket. Uh, got a nice touch from 15 feet, but we like his energy and his motor probably better than anything. And then there's a guy in Tony Troca Morales. Uh, people are excited about him and for good reason. If you look at some of the schools you beat out for his service, it looks like a Final Four gathering. Kentucky. Georgetown, Arizona, UCLA, this was a highly sought after talent. Very talented kid, uh, working hard to, to make it academically. The language barrier has been an issue, but he's working extremely hard and we're hoping all that will work out and we'll get him on the floor. But he's 6'10 forward, very skilled, makes guys around him better, and another good kid. When we talk newcomers, there's a couple of guys, they've been in your program, but we did not get to see them on the floor last year. They will certainly contribute in the 2013-2014 season. We start with uh, Antoine Space. What does he need to do to get those minutes and be a contributor to the Aggies? Well, he just has to have a, a consistent effort. He's, very, he's a very talented kid offensively, uh, can shoot the ball from the three-point line, can put it on the floor and uh, just a consistent effort and some maturity w w would help him be a better player because he's got all the tools. He's a smart kid, uh, did really well academically for us, um, but he can score and he can make plays for other people. And Sean Smith, uh, that's another one who had to sit out last year, will play this year. What's he bring to you? Sean's probably our best overall athlete. Uh, he can be our best defender, you know, very strong and physical athletically. Um, can do a lot of things and play a lot of positions also on the perimeter. And then that's a look at some of these players, these new faces uh, that we'll see on the floor. When you think about 2013-2014, uh, fans are always interested in who we play and where are we playing people. 
How much can you tell us about your schedule that we'll see this year and how things are forming as far as getting a slate of, of opponents non-conference and conference-wise? Well, we've got, um, we've got some of the schedule already done. We've got Oklahoma in the Toyota Center and a doubleheader in Houston. Um, we've got uh, a tournament in Corpus Christi with SMU Virginia and, and Missouri State. Uh, we're, we're talking to uh, North Carolina State, uh, Wichita State, and uh, possibly somebody else to play early in November at that level, uh, a high-level game. And then we've got North Texas is on the, on the schedule, Pan American, um, as well as a lot of other local Texas schools that we'll be playing. And you've got the University of Houston at home, who Houston beat Texas in, in, a tur in the tournament last year. Uh, they got everybody back, and uh, so we've got a good home game in the University of Houston. Think about the SEC. It seemed like every game you played was decided by single digits. I know you had a string for a while of conference games that really essentially came down to either the last shot or the final minute. This conference, it's just getting better and better, and the Aggies certainly will have to rise to the occasion when you get to that portion of the schedule in January. No question. Um, the league's going to be better than it's been last year. Last year was a young young league. Uh, Kentucky's back to being probably picked first and probably preseason number one in the country. Uh, but all the other teams have gotten better and we'll have uh, 10 first to second year guys, you know, so we'll be very young and our program's still in transition, but we, we like our talent level. It's gotten better and uh, we're excited about the challenge. Speaking of the SEC, you went to the conference's meetings recently in Destin, Florida. Sounds like a vacation, but you guys were, were pretty busy there. I always find these meetings interesting because there's, there's stories coming out about how you know, a football coach may not like how their schedule's laid out. But when you're in these meetings with these opposing basketball coaches in the conference, can things get heated in the room, or is it casual conversation about what we need to do with the league basketball? It's, it's interesting. We we our meetings take place right next to footballs and so we hear football a little bit more so than they probably hear us uh, but the basketball coach is all it's real positive um, just doing whatever we can to improve the league and improve each program because we've got to get more teams in the in the, in the NCAA tournament and last year we were we thought short in a couple of teams you know and some of that has to do when, when Kentucky's good and they're one of the top teams in the country it pulls our league up you know and uh, they'll be good again but uh, we're really just trying to help teams get to the NCAA tournament and help each program get better and so most of the coaches are all good guys and all in it for the same reason. So was that essentially the biggest topic discussed in those rooms how we can get more into the dance or were there other things batted around about how we can improve? How, in, in marketing our league you know just um, it's it, we got the best league in, in the country you know, and people know that for football, people know that for baseball and some of the other sports, but they need to know it for basketball. You know, when you look at the, the cha national championships, the SEC's had more national championships than anybody else in the country, but it, it starts with a lot of new coaches in this league in, in, in transition, building, rebuilding programs, and uh, I think you'll see a, a much improved league, and we talked about improving our conference, our preseason schedules to, to help our RPI, so It'll help more teams get in the, in the NCAA tournament. Another thing we saw in the news recently, uh, the APRs were announced, uh, the academic standing of teams and schools. And one thing it showed about your program is that, that you guys have certainly made the commitment to academics with these players. Well, we've had our best APR score probably in the last four or five years this year. Um, and we inherited a situation where the number was low and you're limited on whether you can uh, recruit so many guys, you're, you're limited on, on guys if they're not getting it done academically, just getting, them, getting rid of them, you're kind of stuck and in, in, in handcuffed in a lot of ways. But our staff and people at the Bright Center have really done a good job of getting us back in good shape. We finished with the best GPA we've had since I've been here, and they say it's been the best GPA it has been here in a long time with, with our guys averaging over a 3.0. We had a lot of guys graduate in the last two years, five guys graduate in the last two years, and we got one more who will graduate this summer. 
So we're, we're making good strides and improving that. Now you talk about those graduates, uh, Dash Harris, Jared Johns, Elston Turner, and Ray Turner all played under you. They have graduated. Zach Kinsley is going to, Alex Baird is going to as well. As a coach, is it as important to see these guys wear that cap and gown as it is the sneakers and the, and the shooting yeah. shirt before? You know? No, to me it is, you know, building a culture of excellence in everything we do. Uh, and we weren't that way in the academics when I got here. And uh, I think we've made some strides with that, and uh, we've, we've gotten better. And uh, Derek Lewis came back and, and, and got his degree, so we've been on him, and, and fortunately he came and finished. So, I mean, uh, we're improving the program, we're improving the reputation academically, and, and that's what it's all about. You mentioned improved scores, and uh, there was a, a situation before you arrived where 846 was the APR of the Aggies. That's what you mentioned with the low score before you got here. 920 uh, was the most recent announcement we heard. Probably going to get even better w w with the next announcement. Why is it? What makes what you've done with your staff and your academic people, why has it been so successful in getting these guys with better scores? just simply better overall in the class. Well, just attention to detail, you know, and, and it coming from me, it, from the head coach and, and my staff. You know, we meet with our guys on a regular basis. We talk about it academically. Barry Davis is on our staff, and uh, that's one of his primary roles is, is to uh, basically follow up on our guys academically and then just make them accountable. That's, that's the biggest part. And then summer school has helped with our guys you know having our guys come to summer school both summer sessions so when they're in the spring and, and they're about they only need six hours to graduate you know if they need 20 hours in the spring to graduate these guys are going to play ball somewhere and then i it's hard to come back and get 20 hours where six hours is something that they'll hang around with and, and finish off last thing is this uh, do you think it helps this program all around on the court and even off the fact that you preach heavily a family atmosphere and family underlined and stress with your players, with your staff, and anybody who comes into contact with Aggie basketball. No, I think so. You know, again, I talk about a culture of excellence and culture of caring about each other and, and building trust and building relationships. And now that we've got mostly the guys I've rec recruited and my staff has recruited, then. You know, we have those relationships, and, and, and that's where special things happen when guys trust each other, guys lean on each other, and guys, as a group, collectively, you can do something special. It's hard to do it one by yourself, and that attitude is taking place, and our program is taking form now. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for the time here today. And uh, in November, tip-off be here before you know it. Won't it's coming quick. Looking forward to it. That's Billy Kennedy right here on 12th Man TV.